The thoroughbred is a magnificent animal, bred for speed, bred to compete, the sport of kings. Well, West Coast has it by a six. It's the all new Let's Go Racing from Parks Casino and Racetrack. It's action packed and fun for the entire family. Three of them are right together with one furlong to go. Let's Go Racing is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association. It's fun to see them run. A very pleasant good morning racing fans and welcome here to Parks Racing for Let's Go Racing. On the show today, of course, it's our Breeders' Cup preview day. The fields are set. Post positions are drawn for the 37th running of the Breeders' Cup. Dick and I will have all of the latest here through the next half hour. Our racing coverage takes us up to New York for the Grade 3 Bold Ruler. Trader Danny Velasquez won two stakes there last week. <laughs> Could he stay hot with his long-striding late runner Arch Cat? And our local the race of the week came from Monday afternoon. It's a first level allowance at six and a half furlongs for $40,000. And we'll have Breeders' Cup, more Breeders' Cup, <laughs> and more Breeders' Cup. So stay with us. All that's coming up next year on Let's Go Racing. Hi, everybody. Keith Jones with Mr. Breeders' Cup, Dick Girardi. And Dick, uh, the Breeders' Cup later on this afternoon. And you had a tremendous story this week on Let's Go Racing Parks.com about all of the events that you have covered right. throughout the course of your illustrious career. <laughs> your very favorite is the Breeders' Cup. Yeah, there's no question. Look, it's a Super Bowl of my favorite sport, which is horse racing, and I've loved it from the start. I missed the first one in 84 at Hollywood Park. Keith, this will only going to be miss number five out of 37, but you know nobody's getting to go hardly except the participants at Keeneland this year. But yeah, the two days, the just all of it, it's the final exam if you've been watching okay. horses all year, and it's just one great race after another. Well, of course, the uh, fans can come out here and enjoy the races. There's no live action, but this right. place will be buzzing while all the no simulcast racing. And Dick, with the event this year held in the east, mm -hmm. it's going to be going off right. earlier in the afternoon. Yeah, they, it, it'll be all done by like 5.30 or so in the afternoon when the Classic is run. So yeah, no under the lights this time, because they if it was at Churchill, they could have gone under the lights. They right. don't have lights at Keeneland. Well, Dick, uh, of course, the big one is the Breeders' Cup Classic. It's the last race of the day scheduled yep. for just after 5 o'clock, and there really is a lot on the line Ooh, this year everything. in the Breeders' Cup Classic. A field of 10, it is a tremendously competitive field. Yeah, so we have this year's Kentucky Derby winner, Authentic. We have last year's Kentucky Derby winner for 20 minutes, maximum security. This year's Belmont Stakes winner, and tis the law. And just improbable, the best older horse in the country, uh, Tom's Data, just one really good horse after another. If you add up the earnings of the 10 horses in this race, right. Keith, how about 27 million? These are some serious race horses with everything on the line. I think, as I said, it drew a field of 10. You mentioned improbable. He is the morning line favorite yep. at five to two. Are you good with that? Yeah, I think he should be. He's been great all year long. His last work, Keith, it was a tour de force. Uh, if you said to me, which horses work best coming into this race, the answer is improbable. Right. It was a Baffert perfecto. When you've watched enough of his works, this horse is ready to run his A race. And you know what? He's going to have to because there's four or five horses that could beat him. Well, he has always been known as a horse that had a lot of talent, but he really has come into his own here yes. over the last few months. Dick, the second choice is Tis the Law, mm -hmm. three to one. Yeah, and I think that's more than reasonable. Look, he's, what, barely that length and change in the Derby from having an undefeated uh, three-year-old season. Barkley Tack, instead of going to the Preakness, said we need more time. He's worked great. He looks great. But look, he's a really good three-year-old going against really good older horses. It's that time of year, and it's interesting, too, because since the Derby, Preakness, and Belmont were not when they always were right. and weren't crunched up in the schedule, these three-year-olds have had more time to develop. So this is, I would look at it almost as they are almost older horses at this point. Dick, with the schedule he kept, he was not really fresh when he came to the Kentucky Derby, but he's been fresh, and so we expect his best. And Dick, interesting post positions in terms of the way it drew with right. authentic and maximum security side by side in the gate on the extreme outside nine and 10. Right, the Bafferts are eight, nine, 10, and probable is eight. So yeah, authentic and maximum security very much have the same style. Here's what I think is going to happen from listening to Baffert. He says uh, Authentic needs to be ridden aggressively. That tells me they plan to go to the front. Maximum Security has won races off the pace, and when you watch him this year, Keith, he doesn't have that same jolt out of the gate that he has a three-year-old. So I suspect Authentic to the front, Maximum Security close, improbable, tis the law, mid-pack, Tom stay top, potentially making a run on his best race, hasn't run since the 1st of August, but man, is this a good race. Well, Dick, let's get more on the Breeders' Cup Classic with Barkley Tag. We talked a little bit about it last night, about the draw in the post, and you've said before, 
You'd rather be outside, obviously, but there's nothing you can do about what they give you. <laughs> That's right. What kind of trip do you want him, what Manny, to get him from the two hole? Well, I guess you're gonna have to let him run away from there a little bit so he can get a position. And uh, I don't want a whole crowd on his outside if we can do it. That's all we can do. Let him run away from there like he did in the Florida Derby. And <laughs> if, ideally, if, if uh, Baffert's horses would team up up there on the front end and go like that, we could sit off in a couple of lengths and, and just be outside a couple of lengths. It would work great, I think. But who knows? Well, Dick, of course, we can't wait till 5, 12 later yep. this afternoon. But Dick, as I look back through uh, the past winners, of course, mm -hmm. Tis now the only horse to win back, the classic back-to-back. Yep. You know, it's been 11 years since that incredible victory by Zenyatta. Yeah, yeah, that was at, at Santa Anita on the old, uh, I don't know what the cushion track, right. I think they call that, or whatever. I don't know what the name was, Hollywood Parks, but whatever, uh, artificial racetrack. And then 10 years since maybe her greatest race, it was her last right. race, her only defeat when she lost the blame on the third at Churchill and just was flying at the finish. But, yeah, that's hard to believe it's been that long. But, yeah, Zenyatta was in two of the memorable classics for sure. Sure. Trevor Denman desperately tried to get her Zinyata, up there in the last couple of years. <laughs> just not quite. 19 for 20, still pretty good, but 20 for 20 would have been better. Well, Dick, let's get to some racing coverage. We'll take a look now at our local race of the week. That came from Monday afternoon. First level allowance at six and a half furlongs for $40,000. Number five, Map of America is eight to five here for trader Mike Moore. Dick uh, went down to Delaware Park last time out, and it was a sloppy racetrack, and Map of America did not like the going. Yeah, probably a, it was that one of that Delaware Owners' Day, I think, Keith, just didn't fire, and uh, maybe it was the off-track. Certainly the previous four for Michael is yeah. much better than this. Second choice, number seven, precious, interesting horse here for John Service at 2-1, to one, was a stakes winner as a two-year-old. Dick took a long time off before mm -hmm. coming back for the three-year-old season. Then was in against College Girl, Girl and Cinnabunny. Yeah. So two really two tough really horses, horses around here. That has been off again for four yeah. months. And, of course, College Girl, Girl we saw last week when that stake in New York for our man El Presidente and the Dennis to the Stars. Team. Well, who wins our local race of the week? Here's the call. 22 for the quarter, around the turn they go, and on top with the lead, Map of America. Map of America has the lead by three lengths. Mabel Island's in pursuit second. Racing in between rivals now, chub off the old block. Outside, Snow Forecast is fourth. Wide of that one comes Precious. She needs to pick up her ball game in a major way as they straighten away. Map of America leads it by three. She turns first. Mabel Island is still in pursuit second. Chub off the old block now, splitting rivals and moving quickly. Here comes Isabella Smile. Mid stretch, it's Map of America by three. Isabella Smile on the outside is gaining. Map of America needs the line. Isabella Smile is gaining ground with each and every stride. Isabella Smile on the outside kicks it away. Well, Dip, no Map of America, no <laughs> Precious, but how about number 10, Isabella Smile, who's six to one here for Trader Scott Lake, rallies from well back a big late run to get up and win it by a neck. Pays $14.80 to win. Map of America just misses here for second. I think Isabella Smile, you mentioned on the show the mm -hmm. late runners that yep. there are kind of teases that make yep. that late run but never yep. quite get there. Yep. Isabella Smile kind of fits into that category. Yeah. Last time out going long, mm -hmm. really closed well to finish again just behind the winners, yep. but did go back at the turn back in distance today and gets it done. Yeah, typically I do not like closing routers, trying to close and sprint races. That usually doesn't work, but it worked this time for a uh, for Scott, and uh, look, she was really good and had to be because she looked like she had no chance most of the race. Well, let's get to our first break. We come back here on Let's Go Racing. We have a terrific matchup in the disc staff later today. We'll talk about that in more Breeders' Cup after this. Chair of the ride gets clear by two lengths. Majestic Dunhill's racing in second. If you want action and you want it now, you got to get the new Parks Racing Mobile app. Wager and watch thoroughbred and harness racing from around the world. With the Parks Racing Mobile app, it's easy to open and fund your account. Then, place your wagers and cheer on your horse as they thunder down the stretch. With the Parks Racing Mobile app, you'll easily make withdrawal requests, view the previous day's replays and results. Plus, open any new account now and you'll be automatically enrolled in the Parks Rewards program. The more you wager, the more you earn. Get the new Parks Racing Mobile app and get in on the action. Looking to join the thrill and excitement of thoroughbred racehorse ownership? Buter Stable can get you started. With more than 25 years of experience under the leadership of Greg and Kate DeMassey, Pewter Stable is one of the industry's leaders in racing partnerships, winning hundreds of races and millions of dollars at racetracks all over the mid-Atlantic, including New York. No markup, no management fees, makes our partnerships unique and affordable. We are Pewter Stable. 
Did you know absolutely no taxpayer dollars support the Pennsylvania horse racing industry? In fact, racing generates $1.6 billion that pays taxes, creates jobs and more, right here in Pennsylvania. Welcome back everyone to Parks Racing for Let's Go Racing on Breeders' Cup Preview Day. We continue with our preview deck. We mentioned going into the break, a terrific matchup coming up <laughs> in the distaff. Yeah, look, this is a two-horse race on paper, and I think every other way we have the Preakness winner, Swiss Skydiver, coming back. And Kenny gave it a lot of thought, and I finally think he looked at the classic and said, man, I beat Authentic, but now I get to beat Authentic and all these other horses. So he went in the, in the, uh, in the distaff, and all he's got to do is beat Monomoy Girl, <laughs> who has run against 101 horses, right. Keith, and finished in front of 100 of them. So this is a great matchup. I suspect these two in the stretch will be way ahead of the field and we'll see which one is better, but this is a great race matchup here. You always have some great stats. 100, 101 beating 100, that's pretty amazing. We can't wait for the distaff deck. Always one of our favorite races. Who's the fastest horse in America? And that's the sprint. And Dick Bacoma, who has been terrific this year, yep. uh, is the three to one morning line favorite, but Bacoma hasn't been out for a long time right. and also drew the 14 post. Yeah, there's some interesting things going against him. Is he going to get too far behind? Uh, it is, you know, what, what's his status not having run since the 4th of July? Uh, that wasn't necessarily intentional, but it's just kind of the way it played out. Right. I will say this. This is one of the weakest sprint fields I can remember. There just aren't some of the, I mean, Matoli would just crush this field. I mean, some other really good sprinters you can think of. I give Yopon a huge chance, the three-year-old yep. for Steve Asmussen. Yep. If you look at the field, Keith, you're trying to look around, where's the early speed? I only see one horse. I think Yopon might be faster, so I could see that happening, but it's always fun. It'll take about, a, what, a minute and nine seconds, That's maybe, yeah. and just don't blink. It could be over. And CZ Rocket comes in at a super hot horse, and oh, we'll see boy. how he does as he yep. comes east. Dick, I thought another loaded race. We talked about how loaded the Classic was, but the Philly yeah. Mare Turf came up big. Of course, it's Chad against just about everybody else. He right. saddles the favorite, the morning line favorite, rushing fall at 5-2, to two, and she is just terrific. Yeah, she is terrific. Keith, start 14 starts, 11 wins, grade ones, uh, two, three, four, and five. She's sensational. Sister Charlie maybe is not quite the same as she has been previously, but boy, Chad was really touting her after she worked together with uh, with Rushing Fall. I like Rushing Fall better in that work, but right. when Chad speaks, I listen. So, And there's some really good Euros. I mean, you got that great Starship Jubilee. Yes. in here as cool as can be from Canada, 19 out of 38 lifetime. Peaceful Aiden O'Brien, who's on, believe it or not, like an 0 for 50 USA streak. Aiden O'Brien, that's hard to imagine. Uh, Terrabellum, John Gosden, Adara. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a loaded race, as you said, but in Chad, we trust. Absolutely. Well, Dick, let's get to some more coverage now. It's brought to you by Chapman Auto Group. Unless our emblem is on the back of your car or truck, you probably paid too much. Let's go up to New York for a national race of the week. The Great Three Bold Rulers, seven furlongs for $100,000. Number two, share the ride, the even money favorite for Antonio Ariega was third last time out in their Vosburg after putting up a big number at Monmouth Park. Yeah, huge number there and the Vosburg, it maybe wasn't up to typical Vosburg standards but still a really good race. Now we mentioned at the Open Danny Velasquez who won two stakes last uh, week at, up at Belmont Park. He comes in here with number four Arch Cat who's the longest price of the four at nine to two. They had won three straight and then kind of put in a subpar effort last time out looking to rebound. Yeah, that one didn't make any sense given the uh, previous form. Danny, the fourth choice. Were these people not not paying attention. Hey, let's take a look at the Grade <laughs> 3 Bold Ruler. So it's Share the Ride, Majestic Dunhill, they're 1-2. And then it's a length to Archcat, Mijos down at the rail as they head up the back stretch. Share the Ride gets clear by two lengths. Majestic Dunhill's racing in second, Mijos is third, by a neck, and on the outside is Archcat, and the opening quarter mile, 23 and 1 fifth seconds. Share the ride, has the lead here by a length and a half. Majestic Dunhill, Arch Cat now moves up on the outside. Mijos trails the field in fourth, three and a half lengths off the lead. And the leader is Share the Ride in front with three furlongs remaining. Arch Cat is in second, Majestic Dunhill down at the rail, and Mijos, the half one in 47 seconds. Share the ride, holding on to the lead. 
It's Arch Cat on the outside. Then Majestic Dunhill, who's just in behind horses towards the rail. And Mijos, who's asked for more as the field comes into the stretch. It is still Share the Ride. Majestic Dunhill now gets off the rail for the final eighth of a mile. It is Share the Ride in front. Majestic Dunhill driving up on the outside. It's Share the Ride and Majestic Dunhill. It'll be between these two as they come on for the finish in the bold roller. And it looked like Majestic Dunhill got there. Well, Dick, unfortunately for the parks contingent, Danny can't quite get it done here with Arch Cat, who levels off late and finishes third. Dick, it's number five, Majestic Dunhill, who rallies up to get past Chair the Ride late and win it by a head, pays $5.90 to win for creditor George Weaver. Dick, Majestic Dunhill had won a race in a long time. Yeah, it's been, been a while, over two years, and you're thinking, boy, you got it back to November of 18 at Laurel since yeah. the source's last won a race. But you know what? You won at the right time. That's Nine to five for George Weaver. You get $5.90 to win. Keep it up in Belmont Park. This is the Pumpkin Pie Stakes. Seven furlongs, fillies and mares for $80,000. A number of horses that we've seen locally here. We'll start with number six, Never Enough Time. Two to one for trader Mike Trombetta. Back-to-back -back stakes victories down in Maryland. Coming up looking to make it three in a row. Yeah, and, and Mike is one of these guys. If people don't think of him as like one of the very top traders, but he's really good. And when he's in there and live, look out. Second choice, number uh, four, Otter Way, who's five to two for Charlton Baker, was second to the brilliant Franks Rockhead last time out. Yeah, Franks Rockhead will be in the Breeders' Cup sprint later today. Not against the Phillies either. She's running against the boys. Here's the pumpkin pie. And it is never enough time in front by a length. Pacific Al in second by a length. Bronx Beauty is down at the rail and racing in third. Length and a half to Honor Way. Gotham Gala is now the trailer. The opening quarter, 22 and two-fifth seconds. It's never enough time. The leader here as they go around the far turn. Never enough time in front by a length. Pacific Gale is right behind in second. A break of two to Honor Way, who's now moved into third. Bronx Beauty has dropped back to fourth. Farther back, it's Gotham Gala. Never enough time, challenged here by Pacific Gale, and on her way on the outside, a close-up third, the half and 45 seconds, and they're at the quarter pole. It's Pacific Gale in between horses, never enough time at the rail, and on her way on the outside. Here's on her way to challenge Pacific Gale for the lead as they move for the furlong marker, and it is on her way taking over now. On her way, getting clear from Pacific Gale. It's Honor Way who's opening up here. Honor Way over the uh, slobby going here. Well, coming out of the grade two, Gallant Bloom. It's number four, Honor Way with Jose Ortiz on board. Five to two, just draws out to win four and a half. Seven dollars and 30 cents to win. Dick, a victory here on the uh, class relief for Honor Way. Yeah, don't you like horses like this, Keith? Six-year-old mare, 40 starts, 12, 8, 7 across over 600,000 in earnings. That will get it done. Let's keep it up at Belmont Park. On the grass, two-year-olds in the Awad Stakes, one mile and one sixteenth, eighty thousand dollars. A very competitive and big field here. The uh, tepid, I mean, really <laughs> tepid favorite, number seven, Space Launch, who's seven to two for Christoph Clement. Dick, Christoph Clement does a terrific job with his two-year-olds on the turf. Yeah, he had a great Saratoga meet, and he's continuing at Belmont, and obviously he'll be live with a bunch of horses in the Breeders' Cup today. Second choice, also seven to two, number twelve, Wooten Asset for Graham Motion, and uh, this is a French bred colt who comes in and just missed, and I mean just missed in his U.S. debut. Yeah, and Graham, again, he's one of these people, when he's in, you must look like two, three, four times to make sure exactly what you're saying. Uh, here's the Awad Stakes. As the two-year-olds move up the back stretch after a quarter over the yielding turf in 25 and three-fifth seconds. And it is a kidnapped, the leader here, by a little more than a length. Claw is running in second. It can be done is on the outside of like a salt shaker. Those two are heads apart, third and fourth. It's a gamble is next in fifth, space launch in between horses. Step Dancer moving up just a bit down on the inside from seventh position. And then we come back to heat of the night in eighth. Shorty, shorty, shorty is on the extreme outside. Then it is Wooten Asset and Catman trails the field. The half went in 51 and two. Kidnapped is challenged here by Claw. It can be done on the outside in third. Like a salt shaker is just in behind racing in fourth. Then it's a gamble. And the space launch. Step Dancer is going to need some racing room. Shorty, shorty, shorty is on the extreme outside. And the field is in the stretch. 
It's kidnapped on the inside. It is like a salt shaker. Now there's room for Step Dancer, and he's coming on through down on the inside. Here comes Step Dancer up the challenge like a salt shaker for the lead, and Step Dancer has taken over. And Step Dancer up the inside successfully. Well, Dick, we had Barkley tag on talking about the classic. Well, he's in the winner's circle here for the All Watt Stakes <laughs> yep. with number eight, Step Dancer, who's seven to one, pays sixteen dollars to win. Uh, Dick Step Dancer was stakes placed in the Grade Two Pilgrim just before this, and again, a little crass class relief, a little winner's circle. Yeah, and Step Dancer finished behind Fire at Will and Public Sector. You're going to see them later today in the Breeders' Cup too. Well, Dick, let's get to our next break. We come back here on Let's Go Racing, Jockey and Train of the Week, and of course, more Breeders' Cup talk. It's coming up. The Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association is the advocate for parks racing horsemen and has worked hard to secure better lives for the hundreds of trainers and their families that work in the thoroughbred racing industry. Our horsemen benefit from medical coverage, trainer pension plans, and increased purses. Thanks to these horsemen, racing at parks is the very best, providing entertainment for you and the entire family. The Pennsylvania horsemen are proud to be part of the community and introduce a new generation of fans to the sport of kings. He's a winner, he's a champion, he's an icon, he's a legend. And now he's back in Pennsylvania. Smarty Jones, Kentucky Derby winner, Preakness Stakes winner, standing at Equistar in Anvil, Pennsylvania. The quintessential Pennsylvania bread has returned. Smarty Jones is back home. Please call Rodney Eckenrode or visit equistartrainingandbreeding.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Parks Racing for Let's Go Racing. Time for the Jockey Train of the Week. It is brought to you by the Turning for Home program. Log on to their website at turningforhome.org and get involved with that great program today. And Dick, Anthony Salgado, our Jockey of the Week, had a triple last week. So nice. he checks in as our Jockey of the Week and our Trainer of the Week. And we're going to find out why in just a minute. <laughs> but it's our man Uriah, yes. Uriah St. Louis. Indeed. He is going to be. He is, but we'll see why. Yep. A little bit later here is our Trainer of the Week. Well, let's get to more uh, Breeders' Cup preview talk. And it's brought to you by Peter Stanley. Stable, log on to their website at peterstable.com and become an owner today. Dick, the Philly and Mare Sprint, Gamine, Bob Baffert opens up at 7 to 5. She has been brilliant. Yeah, she has been, Keith. I'm probably going to try to beat her. I wasn't thrilled with her last work. Okay. Uh, you got the brilliant speed of Serengeti Empress, yeah. who now that she's been sprinting this year, potentially a, a meltdown. Maybe you get a closer at 30 to 1. It's an interesting race. I'm going to do something I try not to do very often, try to beat Baffert when he's the favorite. Closers, how about Bell's the one? Yes, one of those closers, yeah. maybe. Dick, the uh, turf sprint is yes. another just wide open, crazy affair, but got Stormy, who had been off form earlier in the year, is yep. back in form, and she's the 7 to 2 morning line. Yeah, favorite. I got to try to beat her, Keith, just because she's going to come from way back. She won one of these earlier coming from way back, but it's asking a lot. And these are the professional turf sprinters she's in against. I like in Primus, our old buddy Joe Arsino. He, he horse won at Kentucky Downs in a bog right. that he hated. You could see he hated it, and he won anyway. I think his horse going to run great today. And Leanster's another one who had a win over the Long course. So uh, Le yep. you've got that. Dick, the dirt mile, Chad is the favorite. He's, he's favored on the main track here yep. with complexity at 2-1. to one. Art Collector, 6-1. to one. Yeah, give me spun to run. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm here, okay. I'm here off. Uh, but, yeah, that, what, that was so much fun last year. Look, I, I think uh, Chad is going to run great. Here's a horse I like that people maybe aren't talking about. Nick's go broke the track record at Keeneland his last new Brad Cox recently yep. different horse I didn't like our collectors running the Freakness at all and yep. I'm a fan I just didn't understand why he ran so poorly Dick the mile we always love the mile some yes. of the great performances of Gold Cove and <laughs> Ivar is the four to one favorite came flying to win last time out and interesting that Uni is the second choice here at five to one Dick Uni hasn't really been Uni even when she won last time out she didn't really have that burst yeah this is a race with a lot of repeat winners as you said she's obviously gone for repeat me ask back in the day Laura won a couple times the Hoss won this race twice I don't see the same horse. I'm with you, Keith. I really don't. I was surprised Lavar was the fate was the favorite. That's I mean, not that he can't win. Right. In fact, I actually like him a little bit. But I don't. I'm not thrilled with the Euros in this race. I think they're all beatable. But a fascinating race for sure, as it always Absolutely. is. Absolutely. Of course, uh, the turf is uh, the big one of the day on the grass. A field of ten. Aiden O'Brien saddles the top two. But there's a couple of good Americans. Dick Channel Maker is suddenly very hot. 
and Arklo looked like a little bit different horse when they put blinkers on him. Yeah, Channel Maker is like, he likes those softer turf courses, so watch the course, and he'll be in front. Uh, United, of course, ran second to Bricks and Mortar last year, but that was in California on the fairways. This is different. Mandel doesn't do that great when he goes out of town. I think this is a Euro race. Magical almost beat an Abel two years ago. Uh, Tarnawa is really yep. good. This is a really, really good race. I think Euros win this race. Well, Dick, uh, news it does. We're going to wrap it up, and we're going to get some of your thoughts on maybe some of the wagering angles, yes, which we always love. And we'll have that. We come back after this. If you want action and you want it now, you got to get the new Parks Racing Mobile app. Wager and watch thoroughbred and harness racing from around the world. With the Parks Racing Mobile app, it's easy to open and fund your account. Then, place your wagers and cheer on your horse as they thunder down the stretch. With the Parks Racing Mobile app, you'll easily make withdrawal requests, view the previous day's replays and results. Plus, open any new account now and you'll be automatically enrolled in the Parks Rewards program. The more you wager, the more you earn. Get the new Parks Racing Mobile app and get in on the action. Racehorses are pampered, treated with care, and loved. Nothing is more important than their health and their safety. We do right by them. And they do right by us. The hardworking folks who proudly earn our living. In Pennsylvania's horse racing and breeding industries. Horse racing is a lot of fun. But it's so much more. It provides tens of thousands of jobs. 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 And billions in economic impact each year. All across the Commonwealth. Horse racing in Pennsylvania, it's a winner. Turning for Home is a nonprofit that has provided nearly 2,800 former racehorses with a safe retirement. The program was created through the foresight of the Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association. We all love animals, and to give back to something that helps us so much, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing. Responding to the need for a better system that addressed the uncertain future for the retiring equine population at Parks Racing, the PTHA rallied horsemen to support the program. These horses can do anything from hunter jump to Western to therapeutic riding. Turning for Home became the first on-track retirement program at our year-round racetrack. We want to make sure that our horses that have run so well for us over the years get the great opportunity to get a new vocation. Out of everything that we've done in Pennsylvania for racing, I think that's the thing we can be most proud of. If you would like to help these amazing animals find a great second career and forever home, please give us a call or contact us at turningforhome.org. Welcome back, everyone, to Parks Racing for Let's Go Racing. News and notes, the final segment brought to you by the Granny Fund. Get involved with that continued education. It's great stuff on the backstretch. Do it with the Granny Fund. Bruce Casella, Dick Girardi, Keith Jones, and Dick Uriah St. Louis yes. was our trainer of the week. Why did he win our trainer of the week? Yeah, for the second year in a row, he went out to Mahoning Valley in Ohio with a good Ohio bred forewarned to try to win the uh, Ohio Endurance Stakes this year for 100000 it was endurance, a mile and a quarter, and he ended up hooking up with this horse, uh, Wicked Warrior, at the length of the stretch. Uriah gets up to win it by a half, second year in a row. Keithy bought this horse for 40000 two years ago. Now has won 380000 another Uriah. It, the man is just magic. He knows how to get it there done. There it is. I think you talked about trying to beat some of these horses that are going to get there. Yep. Who was your best bet of the day? Yeah, probably Yopon in the sprint uh, versus value versus chances to win. I think most of these West Coast sprinters are not as good as you usually see. So, yeah, I'm thinking Yopon. Boy, if I could get the morning line, right. I think it was like 6-1. to one. Yeah. I don't know if I'm getting that, but boy, would I like to. Well, I just want to remind the folks, come out again. No live racing, but come out and enjoy all of the spectacular action from Keeneland at the Breeders' Cup and do it right here at Parks. Don't forget the new post time, 12.25 on Monday and Tuesday and 12.15 on Wednesdays through November and we'll see you next week. Good luck today. We'll see you next week on Let's Go Racing.